Okay, so I guess everyone's seen a little bit of this presentation before, so I'll just do a quick review of uh, Acanthophora here in Hawaii. Um, so it was introduced, uh, it was believed to be introduced in 1950 uh, from Guam on a whole fouled barge. Uh, it spread within about a year's time uh, throughout all of Oahu, pretty much, and through all the main Hawaiian islands uh, within a decade. Um, it's known to overgrow some native species of uh, limu here and um, is eaten by a variety of uh, herbivorous fish and sea turtles as well. Um, definitely colonizes a much wider range of habitat than uh, any of the other invasive species of algae here. Um, Celia Smith at UH found that it was uh, occupying up to 50% of the substrata on some reefs in Hawaii. Um, and it is the only invasive species that's uh, been regularly observed to use sexual reproduction. Um, asexual reproduction in fragments readily, which is believed to be responsible for a large uh, amount of the standing crop. Um, so we're doing a population genetic analysis that will hopefully um, provide resource managers some basic information uh, regarding al uh, algal dispersal strategies and uh, the spread of invasive species. Um, we hope to answer a couple of questions. Um, so we hope to just determine whether there is um, significant genetic variation here in Hawaii. Uh, it's only been here for about 55 years. Um, there are some questions as to whether it was all colonial, as uh, people believe Gracilaria salicornia is. Um, was this introduction a single event, or are there ongoing or continuous introductions? Um, do the relationships that we observe, if we see any, uh, reveal any patterns uh, in dispersal and spread throughout the islands? Um, are there sources or sinks of uh, propagules? And is the sexual re reproduction that we see, is it um, seasonal or is it limited to specific areas? Um, again, we hope to help resource managers uh, prioritize sites if they were to try removal efforts um, and just answer some basic questions. Um, the method, methods we use, um, we are going <coughs> to use DNA sequencing and uh, microsatellite genotyping, um, as well as observing the reproductive status for all of the individuals that we collect. Um, we collected populations of 40 individuals um, from all of the major islands, um, not Kohalawe and um, Lanai, though. Um, we collected from a variety of habitats, intertidal, subtidal, uh, wave washed boulders, reef flats, um, fish ponds, and boat harbors. Um, we dried silica samples in the field for later extraction of DNA um, or immediately from fresh material. Um, we used for sequencing a marker from the nuclear chloroplast and mitochondrial genome and um, we had microsatellite markers developed. Um, we got seven that were reliable. Um, so from the timeline was January, um, we started the um, contracting for the development of microsatellite markers. It took until almost uh, June. It's notoriously difficult for algae apparently. Um, this company had actually had no success developing a couple of other species markers. Um, so during that time we collected field collections and started to sequence a subset of the extracts we had already obtained. Um, we also sequenced um, some samples that we had from uh, Okinawa, Australia, and Guam. Um, so we started testing the markers in June and um, just for polymorphism and amplification. Um, we screened these markers, discarded ones that were inconsistent in amplification or exhibited null alleles, linkage, um, non-Mendelian patterns. And September um, through the present, kind of I guess like Jeff, uh, we're still pounding out all of the data analysis right now. Um, for this group and for algae in general, it's really difficult. There's a number of things that complicate the analysis. Um, it's also one of the first studies to actually examine population structure of macroalgae. I believe there's only two or three other studies. And um, technical difficulties just with extraction of DNA, which we were able to work out, and um, low polymorphism relative to animal microsatellite studies. Um, also the unusual uh, life cycle and um, use of clonality um, as um, a major means for reproduction um, also make for a difficult analysis. Um, so this species, uh, both haploid and diploid specimens appear identical unless they're actually reproductive, uh, which is relatively rare. So we examine reproductive status um, and there's a wide variety 
um, in distribution um, among populations. Um, most of our collections did not reveal gamete-producing uh, gamete thalli. Um, almost every collection, though, uh, did produce tetraspores, um, but a couple were completely sterile. Um, the seasonality seems to be year-round for both gamete and tetraspore production. Um, and intertidal populations appear um, more likely to produce spores and gametes. Um, we only collected um, gametangular haploid plants at four sites, um, both sites on Kauai, interestingly, um, one on Oahu, a coconut island, and um, one on Molokai. There's a wide range of morphological uh, variation in the species uh, throughout the islands. Um, it's just some interesting notes from field collections, and um, some sites we observe uh, baskets, so to speak, of uh, fragmented pieces that had kind of formed an aggregate and uh, were floating around. Um, there are seasonal populations. Uh, Hale even Oahu um, was originally collected a small sample um, in 2005 in the summer, and when I returned in the winter to collect it, uh, it was virtually um, gone, disappeared. And Skippy Howard also reported a collection on West Maui that uh, was once uh, really well established, and he had returned and couldn't find any of the plants. Um, interestingly, it provides a, a substrata for dozens of some native, uh, very tiny, microscopic red algae. Um, it's able to colonize pretty much anything that you can submerge in the ocean, and uh, it is widespread on all coastlines uh, except for the Big Island. Um, the DNA sequencing, all three regions, uh, which have been used to detect population uh, variation in other red algal species, um, revealed nothing significant in Hawaii um, or even throughout the Pacific. Um, on the other hand, a microsatellite analysis revealed a su surprising amount of um, variation. Um, there was a lot of variation in genetic diversity, allele frequencies, and um, particularly the occurrence of uh, clonal reproduction. Uh, in different populations. Um, each population had unique uh, genotypes, um, often clones that were present, you know, um, eight, ten times out of 40 from a population. Um, there are definitely some unique alleles, um, sometimes to an island such as Molokai, um, or just random to one population. Um, some populations, uh, one on the Big Island, actually, Liliokalani Gardens, was composed of uh, 38 clones and uh, two other genotypes. Um, softwares we use, we're still in the middle of, I guess, really interpreting this complicated data set, but uh, we used the program Kinship to identify uh, the large amount of clones, to sort those all out into groups, um, and GenePop on the web to kind of get our descriptive statistics. 